morning, everybody. We are going into our prayer, and then we will go right into our lesson for one hour of power. Heavenly Father, we say thank you for this mighty day, Lord. Lord, you said that this is the day that you have made, and we must rejoice and be glad in this day. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go and worship the name of our God together. Father God, as David quoted that scripture in the book of Psalms, Lord God, we are all united here to worship and praise you. You are worthy to be praised. We give you glory and thanks for all that you have done for us. We continue to praise you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. For you are the God that's the author and the finisher of our faith. Without you, God, we cannot move. Without you, we don't even have our being, Father. So we honor you this morning, this afternoon, the one o'clock for some people, the afternoon, morning time, evening for some people. We worship you all today, God. We thank you, mighty Father, for being the author and the finisher of our faith. You said, Lord God, in your mighty word, that when two or more are gathered together in your name, that you are in the midst. And whatever we ask you, God, you said all we got to do is not, and we shall receive, Lord. We got to seek, but we can receive. Knock, and the door will be answered unto you. Speak whatever it is that we need from you, Lord. And so we ask you for boldness on this morning. We ask you for clarity this morning. We ask you for understanding of your word this yeah, morning. Yeah. We ask you for the love that covers a multitude of faults. We ask you for the love that also covers no fear. For Lord, you gave us tenacity. You gave us the word of God so that we can live life and live it more abundantly, Lord. And so for that, we honor you, Father. We thank you, mighty Father, for each and every heart and every ear that is attentive on this morning, Lord. We worship you in spirit and in truth, Lord. So we thank you and come before you, Lord, to ask you to forgive us for our faults, Lord. Forgive us for anything that we did to somebody else. And Lord, we also forgive anybody that has hurt us. Anybody that has done anything wrong to us. Yes, we Lord, worship yes. you with a yes, clear Lord. mind. We worship you with a truthful spirit, Lord. Yes. And we come into your presence with thanksgiving. For you said in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 18. That we must thank you for everything, Lord. So we thank you for the good times, Father. We thank you for the tough times, Father. We thank you for our time of consecration, Lord. We bless you, Lord God, for every situation, Father. The tears that we cry out to you in the midnight hour, Lord. You said you would bottle up all of our tears, Father. And you would lift us up in the spirit, Lord. So we thank you for this mighty, wonderful day. It's in the name of Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, that we pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory be to your name. Amen. Amen. Glory be to your precious name. Hallelujah. 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 We thank you, Lord. We worship you. Thank you, Father. That's what you would say. Most gracious and kind, Father, we thank you on this morning, God. We thank you for a new day. We thank you for a new day, God. 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 Yes, thank you, Father. For unity, God. Yes, Lord. And God, we ask you right now, God, that every word was spoken in this word is a powerful lesson on part two, God, of Free yourself from reproach. Yourself from reproach. The, life of apostle. the life of the Apostle Paul. Mm -hmm. Yes. God, that we come together and get an understanding out of this word, God. Yes, thank out you, Out of Lord. every scripture, every point yes. right now, God, we ask you that you continue to keep us, guide us, to be over this in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 All right. All right, First Sergeant, would like to say a prayer? Dear Lord Jesus, coming to you, thanking you for the service that we're about to have, and also thanking you, the, thanking you for just waking us up this morning. Because some people don't get woke up. Lord, I thank you for that. Also praying for everybody that's here. 
that's present and everybody that's on the on the live stream as well. Yes, thank you, Lord. Pray that they have peace and joy and love. Yes, and compassion, yes, Lord. Thank you for everybody. And in Jesus' name, Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Come on, Mother Sassy. Thank you for this day. Thank you, Father, for not letting me feel so lonely anymore. Yes, Lord. I do have to be by my side. Amen. Thank you, Father, for giving me the strength to keep on keeping on. Yes, Lord. Thank you for my spiritual family that I have talked to and they can trust you. Yes, thank you, Father. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Father. time. It is John chapter number six. John chapter number six. And we're going to go to verse 35. And I'm going to teach you guys something here. And oh, some of you guys that pray, you will never play, pray the same. AMP version. AMP version. John, you're welcome. John chapter six. Verse number, we're going to start at verse 26, okay? So it's words to the people. So I'm going to give you words that Jesus Christ gave to the people. I'm going to give it to you guys, okay? 
John chapter 6, starting at verse 26. Mm -hmm. AMP or? The, the AMP version. Amplified. You know, I learned something about an amplifier. It takes your voice from this to the voice of this. I believe I have one built in in my mouth. I mean, for those of you all that don't, bless y'all, because I got one, okay? And I can remember my family saying, why are you so loud? And I said, I don't know, but God's going to give me purpose one day, and he did. He made me a preacher. Oh, Jesus. Father, help. All right, so now, words to the people. Jesus answered, I assure you and most solemnly say to you, you have been searching for me, not because you saw the signs attesting miracles, but because you ate the loaves and were filled. Do not work for food that perishes, but for food that endures and leads to eternal life. Eternal life doesn't mean in heaven. Eat the word eternal means forever. Okay, let's get that straight right there. All right. Which the Son of Man will give you. For God the Father has authorized him and put his seal on him. Then they asked him, what are we to do? So that we may habitually be doing the work of God. Habitual does not mean bad things, children, but you can make it a habit to do good things also. Yeah. All right? Yeah. Life is what you make it. Jesus yeah. answered, This is the work of God that you believe, adhere to, trust in, rely on, and have faith in the one whom he has sent. So they said to him, what sign attesting miracle will you do that we may see it or believe you? What supernatural work will you do as proof? Our fathers ate the manna in the wilderness. As it is written in the scripture, he gave the bread out of heaven to eat. Then Jesus said to them, I assure you and most solemnly say to you, it is not Moses who has given you the bread out of heaven, but it is my Father who gives you the true bread out of heaven. For the bread of God is he who has come down out of heaven and gives life to the world. Do you all see that? Does everybody see? He gives life to the world. So we don't need to be talking about praying about dead people, people that died, people that didn't make it. Get that out of your prayer vocabulary. Because we are to speak life over every situation, no matter how dead we may see it. All right? So let's keep going. It says, Jesus replied to them. Know what he said to them? I am the bread of life. The one who comes to me will never be hungry. The one who believes in me as Savior will never be thirsty. For that one will be sustained spiritually. So those of you all that pray, please don't pray about people that didn't make it the night right. before. Amen. Get off of that. Amen. That's religious ideology. Mm -hmm. If we are speaking life, then we don't need to... The Bible says that Jesus said, let the dead bury the dead. That means dead folks, hey, we love everybody, but Jesus is the bread of life. So don't pray about, oh, Lord, Father, thank you because we could have died last night. We could, some people didn't make it. Stop, stop the foolery because we are learning how to have the bread if Jesus is the bread of life, you ever wonder why people pray about dead stuff all the time? I mean, Jesus is the one that said he's the bread of life. Yes, he did. Sidebar for all of you that are praying, don't pray about dead things, children. No. But speak life over every situation. Even if the folks didn't make it, hey, God bless them. Let the dead bury their dead. 
you know, give it over to God, my pastor. All that's wonderful. That's wonderful. That's good. But speak life in your prayer. Don't say, oh, Father. Oh, Lord, I couldn't. Oh, Lord, wait a minute. Ooh. And start praising because Amen. you live it. Amen. You are a living Amen. vessel. Yes. And God has brought you to live life and live it more abundantly. So let us have those kind of prayers. Father, thank you that I am living and I shall not die. Yes. That I will declare the works of the Lord that he who begun a work in me will continue in the name of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Until Jesus Christ. Because mm -hmm. he already came to ask him already. to be a little bitty baby in a manger. Oh, man. He already did that. And when he went to the cross of Calvary, this is what he did. Father, I commend my spirit. It is finished. If something is finished, doesn't mean it starts over again. No. Only church folks will teach you that it starts life over again. That's not true. Life is life, and it will continue to be life. I mean, if I go see you at the doctor, you want me to start talking about, well, well, go in peace. No. You know, no, be at no, peace. No, no, no. That, Father, in the name of Jesus, because you are the bread of life, I speak life over That's this man. Right. This right. is what life is, children. Yes. You are not to speak death over anything. And if you go to the hospital, and a bunch of church folk get at the door do and start saying, I'll be at peace, Mother Sassy. Go on with Jesus. Say, excuse me, can y'all get out of my room? <laughs> Mother, can you come in here? Because I need you to speak life over me. I mean, who wants somebody to speak death over them? Nobody. Do all, are y'all, does everybody understand me? Nobody wants nobody to, well, Lord, you know, it's some folk at the hospital. It's some folk didn't make well, guess what? It, we, that's not us. Not at all. We are life. We, it, Jesus is our Lord and personal Savior. That means he is life. He's the bread of life. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, everybody. Let us go right into our beautiful, beautiful, such, listen. All right, it's 1220 now. We're not ending out to 120. All right? So, somebody put the timer on. Do what y'all do. All right. Let's go right into our lesson for today. And it's going to be part two. Free yourself from reproach. But right here, all right. Pastor, if you can give us just a little tidbit of the, um, go up a little bit here, sir. And let's go to find out what is the meaning of reproach. Scroll over just a little bit. I got you. All right, we good. Better? Okay, we good. All right, so now, let's go, Pastor, into seeing where is our definition of the word reproach. We got it somewhere, the definition of the word reproach. We wrote it down here, guys. Because we just, I just want to give you guys a little bit of, um, of understanding. Because last week we talked about some good things that Jesus, that uh, that God had going on here. There it is. Reproach. Yep. Read that, uh -huh. Read that meaning of what the definition of reproach is, Pastor. The verb reproach means to express this disapproval of criticism. Or criticism. Or criticism.
reprimand. Reprimand. Uh huh. Which means uh, correct you. Correct you. Mm -hmm. As a noun, reapproach can also be changed. So there's all of us have had that spirit of reproach or rejection. Mm -hmm. We've all dealt with that spirit. And as we go on to part two, we are going to find out a continuation of the life of the Apostle Paul. You know why God picked the Apostle Paul? Because this is one man of God that once he got healed, reproach went out the window. And he didn't let in people that talked about him, he didn't let them make him feel rejected. Even those people that rejected the apostle. He did not let the, the people define his ministry. He didn't let the people, no matter what kind of judgment. So I want all of you to understand. When judgment comes, guess what? We learned on Wednesday, God's people don't judge each other. So there is no judgment. And the Bible says that we are the ones that become judges. Of the world. You waiting on Jesus to do something? That's some of the things that Jesus is going to be doing. He not going to come back as no baby. He not coming back to give folks and say, everybody pack your stuff up, we're going to heaven. Please don't stay. People of God, if you don't learn the word of God for what it really stands for, you're going to be very disappointed in the time when Jesus returns. Because he's not taking you to heaven with him. Please don't have a back. What are you going to carry? Actually, have you ever wondered exactly what am I going to carry with me if I'm still living? I mean, do I make a backpack? Do I make an overnight bag? No. Do, I, do, I, do I put on, do, do I got to take my toothbrush and no. toothpaste like I'm going to go spend the night somewhere? Don't need I mean, this is what people think. But mother, I'm going somewhere else. This is where you are going. This beautiful earth. Do you know how beautiful and large this earth is? There's so many of us th that haven't lived and traveled nowhere. We haven't really lived life until we travel, children. Some of, a, some of you guys have been living in one town all of your life, and you don't even know what it looks like to travel. And so it's important for you to know that this earth is at, in, its, at its entirety. It takes, it's going to take you a while for you to go around the earth. For you to go around the world and back, it's going to take you a little while. Yeah. So do you think that God wants to take it off from you? No. I mean, he's supposed to be a loving God, right? Yeah. And so this is what the Apostle Paul went and preached to everybody. About eternal life. About immortal life. We learned it in the book of Romans. All through his ministry, this is what he was teaching. And this is why he was being reproached. Yeah. This is why he was being rejected. Because a bunch of church folks decided to say, uh, no, you got that wrong, brother. But he knew what the Bible said. So it's very important that you understand and know what the Bible says here, okay? So, Pastor, here on part two, uh, let's read that here, where it says, over the course of his ministry. We're going to learn some background about Apostle Paul. Over the course of his ministry, mm -hmm. the Apostle Paul traveled more than 10,000 miles and established at 14, at least. Uh, at least 14 churches. 14 churches, guys. Yes. The book of Acts records three separate missionary journeys uh -huh. that took Paul through Greece. Yes. Turkey, mm -hmm. Syria, and numerous of uh, numerous religious regions rather you won't find on modern day maps. Uh -huh. That's why people try to look for it, but they can't find it. So guess where you gotta go? To the Bible. Right. The Bible is what is gonna give you oh, Paul went here. Oh, he went over there. And if he didn't talk to the Jews, where else you think he went to? all over the rest of the world to go and preach. And a lot of these places, it was Asia. He went all around the oriental continents and countries. All right, 
Let's keep going. We learned throughout the course of the New Testament that Apostle Paul was not only planting churches all around the places that he traveled, but he always <coughs> talked about unity in the body of Christ. Uh -huh. He always talked about us being together, and he always wanted God's people to have one sound, one mind, and one spirit. Some of the places that he went to set churches up was the church of Perea, mm -hmm. the church of Galatia, uh -huh. the church of Thessalonica. Thessalonica. Okay, Thessalonica. In the church of Ephesus. Uh -huh. Now each one, no each one of these churches had their own challenge. He always did this, did his best to preach the good news to them about Jesus Christ and how Jesus wanted us to love one another and be united. All right, I want to say something here. Is death good news or bad news? Bad news. What about life? Is life good news or bad news? Good news. So that's what Paul went around talking about. And that's the reason why the religious leaders could not, they didn't like him. Because they didn't understand what he was saying. Because life did not start it until Matthew came, which was the New Testament. Which was the life that, when Jesus started walk, walking the earth, though he was prophesied about through the Old Testament mm -hmm. that Jesus, there is one that's coming. Wonderful Counselor, Prince of Peace, Everlasting Father. You know the word everlasting means forever, Marie? Mm -hmm. That means always. So this is why it's very important that you guys do not think too much on things that are death. -think. That's sadness. Yes, death brings sadness. It brings gloom. Jesus Christ came to bring life and peace to the entire world. And this is what the Apostle Paul talked about. All right, let's keep going. Thirteen books. The thirteen books written by Paul are Romans 1. No, Romans. The book of Romans is just a book. Yeah. And then this one is 1 and 2. Romans. Uh-huh. 2 Corinthians. First, first and 2. Okay. Oh, that's 1 and 2. Yeah. Okay, that's okay. right. Okay. Okay. First and Second Corinthians, Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, First and Second Thessalonians, um, First and Second Timothy, Titus, and Philemon. So these are all the books that the Apostle Paul wrote under the influence of the Holy Spirit. So here's the point: we must be united even when we don't agree. Oh, we have stuff. We have stuff all the time going on. Whatever this is going on, whatever that is going on. But if Paul walked around and talked about unity, then why are people clicking up at church? Why is the singers and the ministries of the musicians? That's right. They're always uh uh you remember that Marie? Ah, uh -uh, y'all can't be with us. I got a story to tell about this beautiful wonderful man. He was a beautiful, wonderful man. He is the ministry of music. Such a powerful man. And Holy Spirit told me to sow seed to him. I did what Holy Spirit told me to do. I did I wasn't trying to take over nobody. I wasn't trying to updo nobody else. But the man of God had a album released. And Sassy Marie, you remember he sung a song with one of the Williams brothers. Right, yeah, right. Sassy Marie really liked the song because she likes the Williams brothers. And so the man of God came to me and said, Sister Knight, I want to invite you to my album release party mm -hmm. at my home. And I said, me? I said, I'd love to come. You know, I'm so excited that the man of God had included me. 
And he said, Sister Knight, you're such a sweet, loving spirit. I want you to come to my home. So, of course, I got there before all of the the pastor, the religious folk, yes. all yes. of the singers yes. and the so-called people of the clique. Because yes. nobody else was allowed. Right? And so, because... Let's be truthful. This is what the churches do. Oh, yeah. They go and click up with each other. Oh, yeah. Pastors can only hang with pastors. Yeah. And watch this. Even pastors only hang with certain pastors that got a certain amount of money yeah. or got a certain yeah. amount of members. They don't go to the smaller churches and say, you know what? I want to bless your small church to just come and give some words of encouragement to you all. No. Then they ask for money. You got to pay them a certain amount of money before they come and preach. They charge for prayer breakfasts, brunches, uh, women of the women conferences that they have. They charge money. Then you got to spend money in a hotel room. Then you got to buy your own food because everything they got, they don't give you nothing free. They they charge you for everything because they have all kind of small businesses pay them a fee. So that they can come in and yes. they can set up their stuff, right? Yes. And so when I got there, I was sitting down and this beautiful minister, I love him to life, I just will not call his name. Um, and so he said, Sister Knight, want to get some, look, we got some food here. Make yourself at home, Sister Knight. I said, sure. When I was up making my food, you know what the, the words of the pastor said? Sarah, what you doing here? I said, I was invited, sir. Look at your minister there. Minister said, yes, sir, I invited her. If his mouth, face, and jaws, and his entire body didn't just... Let me go somewhere else. Let me, go some, let, let me find, let me find a, a hole to crawl in. Because at that moment, this pastor, I know, felt that little. Because... Again, people like clicking up. You know, in the streets, we would click up. So if I wanted to be living a life of the streets, I'd rather stay there in the streets than to come to the house of God and have people look down at me because I don't seem like a dove or a bird because I don't have the voice of Little Mermaid. But I, like, but I like to worship and praise God too. Mm-hmm. I don't care that I sound like a holly cat. Mm-hmm. That is my worship unto my God. I yes. worship Him every day. And, and the Bible says those that really worship Him, they worship Him in spirit and in truth. Yes. So it's not about how you see. Then another thing, this is why Paul went around the whole rest of the entire places that was not the Jewish places. Mm-hmm. Because Peter and his disciples, they or all the rest of Jesus' disciples. They were the ones that were in charge of the Jews and, and Judea and Samaria and all that. But he went to much more places here, okay? So let's go first to this beautiful story because this story is the story of when they met, it was beautiful, and then shenanigans happen. So we're going to go to this story. It's such a beautiful story. Let's start first because it's the point is we must be united even when we don't agree. And a lot of people will leave the church and say a pastor did not correct her. So guess what? I'm out of here. I'm going to find me a different church where I can go cause more ruckus at. Because that's all in all when you leave a church And you don't leave a church by saying, hey, I'm leaving because of blah, blah, and blah. Amen. Then what you're doing is you're leaving unresolved issues Mm -hmm. behind. Mm -hmm. And all you're doing it is carrying that baggage on to the next Mm -hmm. place that you go and worship at. So, don't, oh God, don't be unfaithful and unloyal like Chris Brown said. Okay? Hallelujah. So, let's go. Uh, let's go to Acts chapter 9, everybody. We're going to go to Acts chapter 9. And this was the beginning of a beautiful relationship, okay? It was a, the, 
the, the beginning of a beautiful relationship. And we're going to go to the New King James Version. The NKJV. Acts chapter number 9, everybody. And Pastor, I'd like for you to read Acts chapter number 9. And we're going to go to verse 26 uh -huh, to 28. This is when Saul was at Jerusalem. Remember, Saul, he turned to Paul. Okay? Let me know when you guys get there. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, Acts, 9. Acts 9, verse 20, starting at verse 26. Verse 26. Hallelujah. Stand up and shake it off, the girl. Don't fall asleep there. I will come. I will. Where's my water at? Fat Daddy, go get me some water, Pop. I know what I'll do. I'm there. <laughs> All right. Amen. Don't fall asleep. Y'all, make sure. Listen, guys, we're only here for one hour. So give God your attention, your full attention. And guess what? Stop staying up all night so you can be able to be attentive. Because I'm going to splash water on you and you if you guys don't stay up. Okay? I'm telling you now. Acts. So praise Jesus. Acts chapter 9, starting at verse 26, and we're going to 28. All right. What? Let's uh, roll. A &P, right? No. Uh, New King James Version, Papa. NKJV. Mm -hmm. NKJV. Let's go. Uh-huh. All right, and it reads, And when Saul had come to Jerusalem, he tried to join the disciples, but they were all afraid of him and did not believe that he was a disciple. Uh -huh. But Barnabas took him and brought him to the apostles, mm -hmm. and he declared to them how he had seen the Lord on the road and that he had spoken to him and how he had preached boldly at Damascus in the, in the name of Jesus. Verse 28. So he has, no, no he was, excuse me, so he was with them at Jerusalem coming in and going out. All right. So this guy here, Barnabas, actually was the one that introduced Barnabas introduced uh, give me a second guys Bar Barnabas had introduced okay he was an introductory so he said hey guys I know this new guy the Lord already touched him he's not the bad guy that people think that he is how many of you guys know that people will still hold you for who you used to be. Mm -hmm. Even when they see the new you, yes. they'll st they're like, no, that can't be her. Maybe if we talk bad enough about her, she'll turn around and be back mm -hmm. the same that she was. Or maybe <coughs> if we down him long enough, he'll return back. Because watch this, people always say, we'll see the true colors in a little bit. Uh -huh. They'll be shining through. Mm -hmm. And so when you have been changed by God, then guess what? You will not be going back no, to anything. Amen. Because the straight and narrow path, you can't even travel backwards. you got to keep moving forward. Yes, That's why moving forward was so wonderful here for the apostle. So that was the beginning of the beautiful relationship. He told them, hey guys, this, is, this guy is a new guy. He's not the guy he used to be. I saw him. I witnessed in the in, in the in Damascus, he was preaching in the name of Jesus. All right, so let's go on now to Acts chapter eleven, and let's go. Yes, skip just a couple of more. Same version. Uh huh. And we're going down to verse nineteen. Same version. Same version, and it says Barnabas and Saul. They were at this place called Antioch. So it's going to be two uh, two chapters over, which will be, yeah, chapter 11, verse. and we're going verse 19, baby. I got it. Verse 19 to 26. Yeah, from 19 to 26. In the same version. Take your time and read. Watch your commas and watch your, what you what you read, okay? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. 
All right. Y'all ready? Ready. Ready. Now those who were scattered after the persecution that arose over Stephen traveled as far as Phenocia. Phenocia. Y'all forgive me, I'm gonna get to the word. Phenocia, Cyprus, and Antioch, preaching the word to no one but the Jews only. Uh huh. But some of them were men from Cyprus and Syria. 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 Syria, I said that right now. Syria. Who, when they had come to Antioch, spoke to the Hellenist, Hellenistic, Hellenistic. Hellenists, uh, preaching the Lord Jesus. And the hand of the Lord was with them, mm -hmm. and a great number believed and turned to the Lord. Mm -hmm. Then news of these things came to the ears of the church in Jerusalem. And they sent out Barnabas to go as far as Antioch. When he came and had seen the grace of God, he was glad and encouraged them all that with purpose of, of heart they should continue with the Lord. For he was a good man, full of the Holy Spirit and of faith. And a great many people were added to the Lord. Then Barnabas departed from Tarsus to for seek Tarsus. Oh, the, the, then Barnabas departed for Tarsus to seek Saul. And when he had found him, he brought him to Antioch. So it was that for a whole year. They assembled with the church and taught a great many people. Mm -hmm. And the disciples were first called Christians in Antioch. All right. So we're going to look up this one word that's called the Hellenist or Hellenistic. It's an adjective, which is an action word. This is relating to the Greek history language and culture from the death of Alexander the Great to the defeat of Cleopatra, okay? So that's just, it was all, this, this is something that they were doing, these Greek history, okay? So now, this is talking about when Barnabas and Saul, or Paul, were coming together and then he went to go pick him up and he said you know what I want you to come to Antioch over here with me because the other disciples they were preaching only to the Jewish people and Jesus Christ when he came he said I give it to the Jews like I give it to the Gentiles mm -hmm. right so it's the Jews and the Gentiles wake up I'm not playing y'all gonna get up so now the, the first thing that we have to realize is this. Here's what we have to realize, children of Jesus. We got to know that the Word of God is not just for us. That the Word of God is for all the people all over the world. But if the one hour that you are here, you don't come to the prayer line. You hardly ever pray. You read your Bible every now and again when you're not sleeping, shenanigansing, or rolling your thumbs around trying to figure out what kind of mischief you can get into. And if you don't take time to wake yourself up and hear the word, how can you tell somebody about Jesus? How will you know about the story of Paul, Peter, and all the beautiful stories that Mother takes her time to read? So you must be up and alive. Hey, st I've told you guys, stand up. Nobody's going to say nothing to you because you stand up and praise the Lord and say amen. If you, pay, if you learn to pay attention, you won't fall asleep. All right, praise the Lord. So now, 
let's go on down because we are going to keep trying to find out about this relationship that started good. I mean, how many of us know about especially marriage relationships and best friend relationships? Oh, everything is lovely and Mm hunky-dory when things are going good. But what happens when things are not going so good? What do you do when things may not be going so well? So, sorry, they started getting into it. Oh, no, mother, the relationship was so sweet between them. Well, mother, why did they get into it? Let's find out. Let's find out why they got into it. Let's go first to um, Acts 13, and then we'll come back to Acts 15. Acts 13 from 42 to 52. Okay, so that's just two more two more pages over if you're in your Bible or just change if you are in your Bible app, just two spots over. Mm-hmm. So we're going to Acts 13, we're going to verse 42, okay. and we're going to go down to 52. So everybody please pay attention to this. All right, blessing and conflict at this pl- same place called Antioch, which is the place that they were. Okay, hallelujah. All right, so holy water, at least the water is holy. Hallelujah. It's holy and righteous. All right. Uh, it's going to start at verse 42, Mother Sassy. Uh-huh. Acts 13, and we're going to start at 42. All right. Let's read together. Come on. Come on, Pastor. All right. Verse 42. As Paul and Barnabas. Uh, you are in the wrong version because it starts with so when the Jews went. Yeah. No, Pastor. All right, we're going to Acts 13, the New King James Version, and we're going to start at verse 42, sir. And it should start with the word so. All right. So, so when the Jews went out of the synagogue, the Gentiles begged that these words might be preached Mm -hmm. to them the next Sabbath. All right. Now when the congregation had broken many of the Jews. Now when the congregation had broken up. Now when the congregation had broken up, many of the Jews and devout proselytes proselytes followed Paul and Barnabas, who who speaking to them, persuaded them to continue in the grace of God. Mm -hmm. On the next Sabbath, almost the whole city came together to hear the word of God. Mm -hmm. But when the Jews saw the multitudes, they were filled with envy and contradicting and blaspheming. They opposed the things spoken by Paul. Then Paul and Barnabas grew bold and said, it was necessary that the word of God should be spoken to you first. But since you reject it and judge yourselves unworthy of everlasting life, Mm -hmm. behold, we turn to the Gentiles. I want everybody to highlight verse 46. Mm -hmm. Because it says, unworthy of everlasting life, behold, we turn to the Gentiles. Because that means that the Jews did not believe in the everlasting life. That's why they all got in an uproar and started tripping out and saying, wait a minute. You preaching some different foreign things. Mm -hmm. Let's keep going. Verse 47. For so 
the Lord has commanded us. I have set you as a light to the Gentiles, that you should be for salvation to the ends of the earth. Uh -huh. Now, verse 48, now when the Gentiles heard this, they were glad and glorified. The word of the of the Lord they were glad the Lord, they were and glad glorified the, the, the word of the Lord. And as many as have been appointed to eat eternal life believe. And the word of the Lord was being spread throughout all the region. But the Jews stirred up the devout and prominent women and the ch chief men of the city raised up perse persecution against Paul and Barnabas and expelled them from their re region. But they shook off the dust from their feet against them and came to Iconium. 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 Verse 52. And the disciples were filled with joy and with the Spirit. The Holy Spirit. All right. I'm going to give it an illustration. Come on with me. Sister. <laughs> Let's go. All right. Now, this is me and my sister, and we're coming into the house of the Lord. All right. Come on. Come on, let's go outside and we're gonna come into the house of the Lord. You're gonna be you gonna be my girl. I'm <laughs> All right, I'm coming into the house of God and I don't see nobody speaking to me. Welcome, I don't see nobody being hospitable to me. Because mm -hmm. that's what happened to me and mother. Mm -hmm. Ain't nobody fixed us no tea. No, nothing. We were like Patty LaBelle. We were on our own this morning. <laughs> So I was like, wait a minute, wait a minute. Let's put some Jesus in it. Amen. So I said, so come on, let's go here. And you know, the, these folks ain't talking to us, mother. They all clicking up and everything. Let's do this, baby. Pick up, now pick up your foot. Pick up one of your foot. Pick up your other foot. That's what it means to shake the dust off your feet, which means don't get offended. Just go somewhere where you're loved. Go somewhere where you are received. Oh, uh, son, no hospitality. You don't come into somebody's house and just sit. Wake up, Carl. And nobody says a word to you. Nobody offers you anything. Well, let me pick on my little religious finger. I'm, <laughs> I'm gone. I'm gone away from here. Amen. Because this is what happened with Paul and Barnabas. They came because Paul was anointed by the Lord, Jesus Christ, to speak about eternal life. Mm -hmm. So do you all see how God set it up even from the beginning yeah, to yeah. teach all of us? We're not supposed to be speaking about dead things. Dead stuff is not a good news. It's sad. Y'all been to the funeral homes? How sad people are? How sick they look? They're crying. We just had a death in our own family. And God spoke to me and said, uh, let's see here, mother. Speak life. Don't speak death. Amen. For she may be sleeping in Christ. Cameraman, go with me. She is sleeping in Christ. She is not dead. And the Bible says that those that are sleeping in God. How do you know, mother, if I'm sleeping in Christ? And if I'm not sleeping in Christ, well, if you have not said, Lord Jesus, I accept you as my Lord and personal mm -hmm. Savior. Mm -hmm. I believe that you are the Son of God. Come into my life. Come into my heart. I receive you. Amen. And today is the day yep. to accept the Lord Jesus Christ. So that if you go out there and maybe a crash happens, because mm -hmm. we're covered by the blood. So anything that anybody tries to say against me, Oh no, I'm covered by the blood of Jesus. Okay. No, no, no. That's not from that's not my portion. That accident that's further down the way, the angel of the Lord is gonna. Because 
the Bible says mm -hmm. he'll get taken. Psalm 91. Yep. He'll get his angels. And his angels will take charge over you. So you won't even dash your foot against any stones. That means anything, any accidents, that's not for us. Anything that's out there in the road, that's not for us. What about the shootings? That's not for us either. The, the bullet will do this. Go on and go to the next person. Because you got to believe. And this is where church folk, all the Jewish people that had never heard this, they were all standing like, what are you talking about, Luis? <laughs> because they didn't know that Jesus Christ came to bring eternal life. Amen. And I don't know where they were lost in the sauce at Marie. Because Jesus told them. We just read it in, in John 6. I'm the bread of life. He didn't say I'm the bread of dead. He said I'm the bread of life. So now, the, so they were upset. They didn't like it, and they were all in an uproar, and they all decided to come up against Paul and Barnabas. Because look what they did in verse 50. But the Jews stirred up devout and prominent women. So now they go and go tell the other church leaders, hey, did you know that they were over here talking shenanigans? Man, let's run them all away. And then, of course, they, and Barnabas, it says... Uh, they raised up persecution against Paul and Barnabas. And then they expelled them. Y'all get, get out of my church. You are up in here speaking about life. And we're all mourning about death. So we won't, we won't be yes. allowed in a lot of church places. Mm -hmm. And when we go in, they're going to kick us out. Mm -hmm. But some of those people are going to say, Hold up, that woman is making sense. Let me go with her. Because... Death is a bad thing, everybody. Yes, is. Death is. isn't a good thing. Right. It's a sad and lonely place. And then when your loved one dies, you're mourning over them. You're tripping out. Oh, my God, what happened to them? And if you don't believe in what the Bible teaches you, that they will be the ones to be raised up first. That's what Jesus said. He said, I'm going to raise them up first. All right, let's keep going. So now let's go and find out some more information. Let's go on um, to Acts chapter 15. 15. Mm -hmm. And now we're going to talk about, because they were doing good. Y'all see how good they were doing? Yeah. They were going around all these places because in 14, they went to Iconium. So that's another beautiful story. And then, uh, of course, they were going, they, they was getting... They, they strengthened in the converts, but then they were also getting stoned, and they were getting all, a lot of bad things happened to them. But in the midst of all of that, they were they were blessing a lot of people to believe that Jesus Christ is the bread of life. So not okay? everybody shunned them. No, the people that they that were received by them, they actually were getting some good things. Okay. Mm -hmm. I mean, what's better than living forever? That doesn't get any better. What's better than immortality? It does not get any better. Because you get a chance to wake up and do it again. And do it again. And go better and better and go higher and go higher. You get a chance to right some of your wrongs that you have been wronging for years in your life. And one of the days you wake up and say, you know what? I think today I'm going to be like George Foreman. I'm going to go and ask everybody to forgive me. Because that's what George Foreman did when he found God. When he found Jesus in that movie, if you guys go watch that movie. I watched movie, that movie yesterday. It's beautiful, ain't it? And he found the Lord and he said, oh no, I didn't come here to fight you. I came here to ask you to forgive me because I hated you. I couldn't stand you. You right his wrong. And so he had a chance to right all of his wrongs. I mean, don't we want that chance? Yes. I know I do. I, if there's anybody that I stepped on, anybody that I did wrong, I, I want to right those wrongs and say, hey, you know what? Let's cut the beef out, and I just want to say, please forgive me. And a lot of people, they rejected them for the good news that they were bringing. 
But there, but the ones that did bless themselves, they were converted, and many thousands of people came to be converts in believing of the resurrection of Jesus Christ and of life, immortality. That's why they were getting into it with a bunch of church leaders, and that's why even the church leaders came up against them. All right, so let's go to Acts 15, and let's go down to verse 36, y'all. Um, yeah. Uh, it's kind of, this is this story here is coming up to be kind of sort of like when the marriage is starts. Oh, the marriage is sweet. When best friends start, best friend, best friend, where we go eat today, best friend, best friend, best friend, you gonna give me warm back, best friend. But the moment that something happens between you and your best friend. Now you're angry with your best friend. Now you don't want to have nothing to do with him. So now let's go and find out what happened. Because this is the division over one guy. His name was John Mark. Let's find out what happened. Let me know when you get there, Mother Sassy. Acts 15, we're going to start at verse 36. I'm there. Acts 15, verse 36. I'm so proud of you, Sassy Marie, with your Bible. I'm so proud of you. And that's a beautiful thing. There's nothing wrong. My papa teaches from his Bible. I love to hear the flips of the Bible. Okay. All right, you there? Woo woo. All right, mother. <laughs> mother said woo woo. <laughs> All right, let's go. Then after some days, Paul said to Barnabas, "Let us now go back and visit our brethren in every city where we have preached the word of the Lord and see." how they are doing. Now Barnabas was determined to take with them John called Mark. But Paul insisted that they should not take with them the one who had departed from them in Pamphylia, Pamphylia. Pamphylia and had not gone with them to the work. Then the contention became so sharp that they parted from one another. And so Barnabas took Mark and sailed to Cyprus. All right. They got into it, y'all. Mm -hmm. This is why we must be united even if we don't agree. Mm -hmm. So many people lose out on their greatest blessings, especially pastors. Especially men pastors that are taught by a woman. So I give this advice to my son on a consistent basis. Don't lose out on the greatest blessings that God got for you all because I corrected you about something. Or I talked to you about something. This is what we're supposed to do. Blah, 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 blah. And then we're supposed to go. What are we going to eat today? Mm -hmm. Where are we going? Let's go turn to, let's have this discussion. This is the way we're supposed to do. Now, I got to say something about John Mark. We found out some not good information about him. 14 minutes. John Mark, all right, thank you. John Mark here in Acts chapter 13 and verse 13. And let's go there and go see it. Go back to 13 and 13 only. So you will understand and say, oh, he was wrong for that. Because we want to know, why did they get into it? How come is it that Barnabas wanted to take this John Mark guy, but Paul said no? So remember, I'm Paul, and pastor could be Barnabas, okay? So we're going to use that as an example. Amen, hallelujah. And pastor, I want you to read just verse 13, sir. Verse 13, uh-huh. Chapter 13, verse 13. All right, you got it? All right. 
Let's go. Let's drive. Yahweh Paul and his party set sail from Papus. Uh huh. They came to Perga. Uh huh. In Papilia. 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 Uh huh. And John, departing from them, returned to Jerusalem. All right. You know I'm from the hood, and they got this little shenanigan song, but it's true. Y'all just go back to listen to it. It's not a sweet song. But the song is by this guy named Chris Brown. And Chris Brown goes through some shenanigans in his life. And he said, hey, you know what, Sassy? These people right here ain't law. So that is who John Mark was. That's why Paul got upset and said, wait a minute. We're not taking him with us. He's not loyal. He left us in the... He, in 1313, he left us. He abandoned the mission. He didn't want to go with us. So what is the moral of the story? It is better for you to follow behind and go on with us yeah. than for you to not finish your mission mm -hmm. because the blessing can be right on the other side Amen. of the door for you. Amen. Don't be so quick to say, well, you know what? Last week, she really pissed me off. I'm not going back to church. Marie, let's find another church. No, we can't do that. This is why so many Christians are losing today. Because they get into it with Willie, Fufu, Baba, freaking Frack, Wadi and Dottie. There's all kind of people at the church. And so, what am I saying with the spirit of reproach? When that spirit of reproach really leaves you, you won't stay in your feelings. But you'll say, Father, please forgive me because I called her a really bad name in my heart and I didn't mean to say that about her, Lord, because I know she doesn't mean me bad. But she means me for my good. Father, forgive her, Lord, because when she first started the ministry, maybe everything wasn't going according to the way that I thought it should have been. But you know what? That's my spiritual mother. I'm, we're gonna, we're, we are going to ride this thing till the wheels fall off. And then when the wheels fall off, we're going to be like the Flintstones. Yep. And we're going to push them. Mm -hmm. We're going to get on our feet and just push the car. Mm -hmm. Because a person with undivided loyalty and unfaithfulness will not be good to you. They're not good to God. If they're sneaking around and doing anything out of order, being unfaithful or unloyal, I, or I'm going here, I promise you I'm going here. But then you're like, well, hold on, because I just passed by and you didn't go there. Amen. You went somewhere else. Mm -hmm. So now you get to see. And watch this. Thank you. The most important thing for everybody to remember, people that have, um, that have divided loyalty, mm -hmm. let's go to James, because James is going to tell us really good. Thank you, Holy Spirit. The scripture that's in James, Pastor, that speaks about Divided loyalty. Okay. Mm. That's good. Mm. That's good. That's good. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. We are all supposed to be learning. Let's go to James chapter 1. Okay. James chapter 1. So the book of James is located right after Hebrews, Mother Sassy. Yeah. All right, James chapter 1. Yeah, uh-huh. And we're going right in, and let's go into... Hmm. Let's change this. Let's go to the NLT. NLT, everybody. NLT, New Living Translation. And we're going to start at... Ooh, ooh, ooh. I got to take it to verse 2. You know why? Because relationships, they go through some struggles sometimes. They go through some humps and lumps. Mm -hmm. And so any relationship, God will teach you here. Okay? Amen. Working out the keys. Amen. It's, you're going to start at faith and endurance. Start at verse 2. And read it till I tell you to stop. Dear brothers uh -huh. and sisters, uh -huh. 
With troubles of any kind. Troubles of any kind. Come your way. Come your way. To see in the opportunity for great joy. Great joy. For you know that when your faith is tested, uh -huh. your endurance has a chance. Yes, grow. yes. So let it grow. Let it grow. For when your endurance is fully developed, you will be perfect. Perfect. And complete. And complete. Need, needing nothing. Stop right there. Sidebar. Stop letting the church folk tell you that you'll never reach perfection. Because that's not what the Bible says right here. Keep going. Verse 5. Verse 5. If you need wisdom, uh -huh. ask our generous God. Ask him. Just ask God. And he will give it to you. Uh huh. He will not rebuke you for asking. Yes. But when you ask him, be sure that your faith is in God alone. Do not waver, for a person with divided loyalty is as unsettled as a wave of the sea that is blown and tossed by the wind. Such people should not expect to receive anything from the Lord. Their loyalty is divided between God and the world, and they are as, as unstable in everything they do. Yeah. Stop right there. Do you all see that? Does everybody see that? Mm -hmm. Do not be unfaithful. Listen, you got the right to do whatever you want to do, but not everything that you want to do may be conducive to your spiritual growth. Yeah. So therefore, you got to pick and choose. Just like you do with a relationship. Is this woman of God really teaching me? Because if she is, I'm going to put my pride to the side. I'm going to put my shenanigan ways to the side. Because when I really sit down and think of it, I was wrong. I was kind of wrong there. I was, I, I was supposed to open up the doors of the church at a certain time. I, I don't need to have nobody sitting outside. I was kind of wrong, because when mother first walked in, I was supposed to say, well, uh, what, what kind of tea you want? I know I'm busy doing other things, but if I'm a servant of Jesus, I got to be hospitable. When mother comes here, you know, I learned some things about Mother Jordan. Let me go over here and hug her when I talk to her. Mother Jordan is the kind of woman, she not going to ask for nothing. She going to sit right here, and she going to say, ding, 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 dup, 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 dup. Y'all know that's the Jeopardy. Yeah, yeah. And she was looking at her phone. And I was waiting for a little while, too. I said, well, you know, maybe they're, because, you know, they're doing a little shenanigans. You know, they're getting themselves together. And I said, well, uh, Ding, ding, ding. I started singing the ding, ding, ding song. And I was trying to figure out, well, mm -hmm. until I came out, I said, Mother, would you like some tea? Father Jesus. Yeah. This is the kind of woman she She's not going into the kitchen. Only kitchen she go to is the kitchen in the apartment. Because that's where she lives. She's not going to step on nobody's toes. So if it takes you 20 minutes for you to serve her a drink, and that's when she she go, but she gonna take note of that, and she gonna say, "Well, I don't know how long I gotta come over here to be treated with uh, with not hospitality." So any time that you're not treated well, you're supposed to do this, shake the dust off your feet. But what about if it's your family? It doesn't matter. God didn't just say you. You see the cameraman? He's on his game. Cause guess what? I'll put water on him too. So, therefore, we are supposed to be on top of everything. I mean, we only got, but now we got two days of church service. But one is in the evening, and then one is in the daytime. Mm -hmm. It doesn't, if, listen, wake yourself up about six or seven if you know that you got to get this, this, and this done. So that that way it'll be done. So whenever it's time, thank you, sir. 
whenever it's time for you to do whatever, then you'll be able to be available to say, yes, sir, how can I help you? Pastor, you just got, would you like something? Would you like a cold drink, sir? Let me get you something. When mother steps through that door, if she comes to visit, not even while she's sick, mother, what would you like to drink? Can I get you anything out of the kitchen? Then she'll tell you, oh, uh, yeah, go ahead and give me this. Or you know what? I'll sit here for a while. Come back to me in a few minutes. This is what true hospitality is. Because nobody's going to want to be around anybody. Look what Paul and Barnabas did, even when they were together. Yep. They shook the dust off their feet and they left that time. Because they, they were pushed out of that place. And you know what? Many miracles, signs, and wonders were performed by Paul. Now here's where Barnabas got lost in sauce a little bit. He forgot his place. Mm -hmm. He forgot that he came out. He forgot that it was Paul that was assigned to do this task. And Barnabas, if, as long as he would have stayed serving Paul, there would have been no issues. Because if I tell the pastor, we're going to do this, this, and this, I know they want to take this guy. But pastor, he left us. He left us and aborted the mission. We're not going to take him. Then pastor's going to say, yes, ma'am, mother. The Lord spoke to you. That's what we are going to go with. This is the kind of unity that you must have with each other because if you don't, you're going to miss out on the greatest blessings that God has for you, for your ministry, for your churches, even for your um, different auxiliaries. How many churches are knocking down the one that has the ability to put everything together? They're not trying to showboat anybody. No. I got a quick story, and we're going to end out with this last story. This same place that I went to. I love to cook. So it was a women's conference. Mm -hmm. uh, and the mother of the church, the, the first lady, sweet, I want you to come in the kitchen and help them because they really need your expertise. Now, mind you, I have a catering business at this time. I know all about hospitality, how to serve, what to serve, when to serve. Mm -hmm. And the leader of the group, of the ministry in the kitchen. She said, um, girl, we're not finna do all that. We're finna put all these bag of meatballs and we're gonna just put them inside this bag and we're gonna put them in this gravy. And I said, excuse me, I got a question. Hello, this four feet nine. Yeah, I'm four feet nine. It's me, it's me, it's me. I said, is this what you serve your first lady? The woman that you love? and you say you honor and she's your spiritual mother, forget the other ladies that's going to be right there that's going to either say a good word about what their experience is or a bad word. Because ladies and gentlemen, you only get one time to make a first impression. You can't ever make that first impression ever again. And so what I did is, I said, Sassy Marie, I need your help. Girl, let's roll these meatballs up and go give them some real meatballs. The food was so delicious that they all went back to the, the original first lady that was the host of the entire women's conference. The people even came. The armor bearers were flocking to the kitchen saying, um, um, Sister Knight, Sister Knight, my, my, my prophet is my woman of God. She sure loved your food. You got a little more that she could take home? I sure do. Hold on, give me a second. And that woman became so mad, she got sick and ill and left out the church for a while. And she didn't come back until it was almost my time to go out of that church. And in the midst of the acknowledgement, even the pastor was, oh, this is your lane, girl. This is what you're going to do. He had to recognize me. Because everybody else recognized me. Even strangers that came into his church recognized me. So what am I saying? When the spirit of reproach leaves you, don't go back and pick it up. Don't go back and travel backwards and say, She did me wrong. I'm leaving. She made me feel rejected. I don't want to be around her anymore. Praise Jesus. This is...
the second part in our ending of the story of Apostle Paul and some of the things that he went through. Now, Pastor, can you give us some uh, words of, of exhortation, some ending words, and lead us out with prayer, sir? Turn, turn the mic, the camera to the pastor. Okay, got it? All right. I want to say, as a united influence, when we come together and we are visiting and working bread right together as a church, let's do our very best to love on one another. Amen. To encourage one another embrace one another with a hug. You know, a hug can go a long way. Yeah, amen. Um, let's continue to do the will of God. As Mother said earlier, you may be angry or whatever going on. But you know what? Suck it up. Amen. Pray about it. Cast down that thought and keep it pushing. Don't you know that's the devil's assignment to try to do what he do? Yeah. But what is our assignment? Stay focused mm -hmm. in the Lord. To stay yes. encouraged in the Lord. Yes. And do the will of God at all times, no matter what's going on. I leave with that peace of love. God bless. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Lead us out with prayer. Uh, yes, most gracious and proud by the week. Thank you for this such a powerful word. God. Yes, thank you, Lord, for this powerful word. About Free yourself from reproach. Yes, Lord. And we thank you, God, for every word that was spoken, every scripture that was uh, brought out, God. We thank you for every point that we take this home with us, God, that we go back to our notes and read these scriptures through the week so that we can be covered, God, not to be a reproach to ourselves. God, we ask you that you bless the food that we're about to really eat, bless the hands to prepare it, and we thank you for bless those that are less fortunate those, yeah, then bless those that are less fortunate and the praise that we can give out, if you have some at your home, give an extra praise, fix, fix something for someone, yes, Lord. and bless them so that they can have a meal as well, Amen. it's in Jesus name that we pray Amen, Amen. Amen. This has been our noble platform, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Let us praise God together. Y'all go back and watch the uh, the replay. You know, go back and heart it. If we do not um, uh, encourage each other, and if we don't learn to be each other's cheerleaders, then nobody else is going to be our cheerleader. Mm -hmm. We as charity and everything that we do, it starts at home with all of us. So this is our noble platforms. We are friends of God. We are servants of the Lord and prophets in office. Love you all. Have a wonderful day, everybody.